Um, welcome to Clarksdale and the Delta Blues Museum. I'm Shelley Ritter, the museum director, and I'm so glad y'all are here with us today. Um, our presenter today is Terry Buckaloo. He's a history major, knows uh, so much about the history of Helena Blues and the blues scene and the history of the King Biscuit Festival, which is actually starting today and going through the weekend. Um, this is the second program in our From the Archive series. And in presenting these programs, the museum is dipping deep into our files on the blues that we've been collecting since we started in 1979 over in the library. And with the help of uh, blues scholars today, Terry Buckley, we're doing our best to illuminate another facet of the blues, namely the history of the King Biscuit Festival. Our first program focused on the history of the Sunflower Festival, so we seem to have a little trend going. Um, these programs are presented through the generosity of the Mississippi Humanities Council, the Mississippi Arts Commission, Entergy Corporation, Michael Lloyd Young, and Friends of the Delta Blues Museum. The Mississippi Humanities Council is an independent, nonpartisan, nonpolitical organization funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities and private donations. The Council's primary objective is to shed light, not heat, on the public policy issues of today by examining the larger value questions involved through the use of philosophy, literature, history, and other disciplines in the humanities. We would like to congratulate the Mississippi Humanities Council on its 40th anniversary this year and to advise you that the views expressed herein do not necessarily represent those of the Mississippi Humanities Council or the National Endowment for the Humanities. Thank you all so much for being here today and we hope you enjoy our program. Terry? Thank you, Shelly. I'd like to thank Shelly and Rich, uh, Lee and Chris and all the staff here at the Delta Blues Museum and of course the uh, Mississippi Humanities Council. And uh, it's great to be here at the, at the Delta Blues Museum. I, uh, I first visited the museum well over 20 years ago and it was still at that point uh, in part of the Carnegie Library, which is just south of here. And uh, it was such a great resource, the, the Delta Blues Museum. It was uh, the first of its institution of its kind that, that I know of and it's it's a uh, helped uh, encourage the growth of similar facilities you know there's a the BB King Museum I know there's a blues museum in Iowa um, Leland. Leland has a blues museum of course the the cultural center in Helena the uh, and there's a, a group of people and they'll probably be here this weekend that are trying to open a blues museum in in st. Louis um, but I, I think it's there's a value in being there first, and I think the Delta Blues Museum has, it, has done a great job with that. And I'll be uh, talking today about the history of the King Biscuit Blues Festival in Helena. It started in 1986, and I will be referring to uh, some materials uh, pulled from the uh, subject files or the archives here at the Delta Blues Museum, which uh, Shelley and Lee have provided me. Um, I'll refer to those, but generally I'll be... I've, I've served on the board of directors of the, of the King Biscuit Blues Festival in Helena. I was on the board for five years, I think, ending in 2007. Um, I've played at three of the festivals when it was the Arkansas Blues and Heritage Festival, and I'll discuss that name change as, as part of today's presentation. I played at one of the festivals oh, last year when the name had uh, reverted to the King Biscuit Festival, and I, I've more or less lived on the grounds of the festival for for about eight years, um, so I really know too much about the festival, and there are some things I will not will not tell you unless you twist my arm. But uh, I I do come at this festival from a lot of different ways, and uh, it's it was very interesting, and and I think mostly an honor to be associated with the such a such a great and historic event as the King Biscuit Blues Festival. I have a. I have some notes here, but I, what I have in my hand are some of the uh, some of the files that uh, from the subject files of the archives at the Delta Blues Museum. And these, uh, I was reading through these in their articles from the New York Times, Memphis Commercial Appeal, and the, is the Press Register, the Clarksdale Paper, and uh, there are also um, programs from the uh, from the early King Biscuit Blues festivals. And programs are a neat thing. It's like, oh, in nineteen. 90 Johnny Shines played at the festival or some other blues legend of course very few of those guys are still with us but it might seem like a simple thing but 
I asked one of the individuals on the board of the Helena Blues Festival, the King Biscuit Festival, I asked, uh, has John Lee Hooker played here? I, I, I know John Lee Hooker never played at that festival, but someone like that. And the person said, no, that would have been a great idea for us to keep the old programs. You know, and here, here they are in, in, in Clarksdale. And I do know that people around the world have them at their, their houses, like crazy blues obsessed people like me. But, um, and I know someone in Helena has those, but I was, I was glad to see these. And uh, this is a, a bit off, I don't know it's not off topic, but the first files uh, I had discussed with Shelley uh, some things that I could talk about before we settled on the most obvious choice, which is the King Biscuit Festival. But um, Lee Farr, one of their, I guess, curator here, sent me um, some materials on the Jelly Roll Kings Blues Band, which was, uh, if you're from Clarksdale, they're a Clarksdale Blues Band, and if you're from Helena, they're a Helena Blues Band. And I <laughs> We'll agree to disagree about that, but uh, the band had Sam Carr as, I guess, the anchor, the drummer, and he lived uh, pretty nearby here in uh, Lula, yeah, and he's buried up there near the casino in a little, it's a really picturesque church, but, uh, and Frank Frost, who was a longtime resident of Helena, was the uh, guitarist and the, uh, well, he played keyboards and the, the singer, and then the much younger Big Jack Johnson from Clarksdale was the guitarist, and those guys... Uh, they, they got together in 1962, and uh, they were, for years, kind of a voice in the wilderness, you know, after the rock and roll took over for blues music. Um, and by the 70s, you know, they were, became pretty internationally renowned as the last authentic Delta blues band. They, they weren't the last. I mean, subsequently, you know, the world discovered these people that had existed all along, R.L. Burnside, the Kimbrough family, so many great people, but I think that uh, the Jelly Roll Kings were the, uh, they were the, the standard bearers, the torch bearers for so long, and when the Helena's Blues Festival, the King Biscuit Blues Festival started in 1986, these guys, Frank Frost, Sam Carr, and Big Jack, Big Jack Johnson were, uh, you couldn't have had that festival without those artists, and I just wanted to mention them. Um, the uh, the materials from the archives that I have here, there's a, a Washington Post article about uh, the, about the uh, Jelly Roll Kings. There's a write-ups in the New York Times written by Robert Palmer, the, uh, the late great uh, music journalist. And uh, I'll be talking today, just as an aside, Robert Palmer's Deep Blues. It's, I keep up with blues scholarship. That book came out in 1980. It's, I think it's still the the best book on blues. It's uh, it's it is very lovingly written. I don't think Mr. Palmer was that detached from his subject, but I think it's uh, it's greatest single source of information about music here in Clarksdale and here in Helena. And basically, it's kind of divided like that. Half the book is about Clarksdale and half's about Helena. And if you want more information about the background of what I'm talking about, I would uh, urge you to. Well, I think probably everybody here has read and reread Deep Blues, but for everybody else out there, <laughs> please check it out. But uh, um, I first came to the, the, my first trip to the King Biscuit Blues Festival, I let several go by. I was in college. I came to the 1991 Blues Festival, and I remember uh, very excited about seeing uh, the Jelly Roll Kings and uh, found out, well, of course, Big Jack Johnson had embarked on his solo career. Um, Gosh, that was in the in the late '80s. But he sat in with Frank Frost and Sam Carr, and a, a great show. And just I, I did want to mention those guys. But the bulk of my talk will be about uh, the King Biscuit Blues Festival. But uh, and I don't I don't know about the public access Shelley grants to the to the archives. But it's it's really invaluable. And and again, I I don't want to make too much out of it. But it's a it's it's helpful and it's instructive that. All this material about the Helena Blues Fest is it's over here in, in Clarksdale. So if you want to learn more about Helena, come to Clarksdale. Helena is a, it's the oldest town in the region. It was settled by Native Americans. It's different Native American villages were there. I think it's on a, on a fortuitous spot on the river. It's a good crossing point. There's high ground there. You, if you've been to Helena, you've seen the ridges back behind town. And it's just a, a refuge from mosquitoes and from the high water uh, but it was Helena was settled by 1796 um, 
named Helena after the daughter of an early settler uh, by the 1820s. Not the oldest town in Arkansas, but it's the, uh, it's the oldest town that's still of any significance. And it's, uh, I, li I live in the Northwest Arkansas Ozarks now, but Helena is, uh, it's at a crossroads. It's on the state border. It's in middle America. It's between North and South, East and West. And it's, uh, it's, it's really Arkansas's version of the, it's Arkansas's deep South. And it's oftentimes it's forgotten by the more prosperous parts of the state. Um, and people say, well, it's like Mississippi down there. And I say, well, yeah, I mean, that's great. But, uh, it's, uh, that Helena retains its blue-soaked aura more than pretty much anywhere in the Delta, but unfortunately a lot of that is because of economic conditions and the, the general decay that you find there. Um, and Shelley, you, you knew Bill Ferris, I know, and worked with him, and, but he, uh, the festival started in 1986, and it was basically in Helena, a lot of concerned citizens, and in a town like that, you know, it's a small group of people that do everything. It's, the same people that volunteer for the Blues Fest, volunteer at the animal shelter, and, and I know these people. And some of the guys from the first days of the festival are uh, still around and still helping run it, but um, there was a Main Street, Main Street group, and I guess that's a national program through the Historic Trust, but you know, someone with the Main Street organization said, well, we need a, we need a festival in Helena. And you know, I, I suppose it could have been a motorcycle festival, an arts and crafts festival, an old timers day, or whatever, but uh, I, they worked with Bill Ferris, and I, at that time, I think he was, I know he went on to be the head of the National Endowment. He was at Ole Miss. He was at Ole Miss at that time, and he, uh, he came up <laughs> with this idea. He said, well, I like to think that he said, duh, you know, blues history, and he, he told them they should have a blues festival, and of course, the, they jumped on it, and I believe it was Bill Ferris who suggested the name King Biscuit. And... Uh, I'm, you're not supposed to say this in Helena, but uh, the King Biscuit Time radio show that, it, that it's named for, the Blue Show, was actually off the air for six years until they inaugurated the King Biscuit Blues Festival in 1986. The owners of uh, radio station KFFA, which hosts King Biscuit Time, actually took the, the show off the air in 1980, and uh, when the uh, festival began in 1986, basically restarted the King Biscuit Time radio show to, I guess to compliment, not to take advantage, I think, of the festival, because I, I, and I'll get to this in a minute, but uh, I don't know how much profit there is to be made off this festival. Um, Helena is, it's really, I, I wrote my master's thesis about the blues musicians in Helena, and this was, this has been 20 years ago, and I was, uh, I was lucky enough to meet uh, Robert Lockwood. I've worked with Sonny Payne for years and years on the radio, uh, the host of the King Biscuit Time, and got to know a lot of the Stackhouse family, Houston Stackhouse, the blues man who uh, taught Robert Nighthawk. Got to know so many people connected with the Helena scene, but I, 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 I it's a love-hate relationship, or I guess it's, it's complicated to use today's internet <laughs> terminology, but it's, it's, it's one of the oddest places I've, I've, ever, I've ever seen. I mean, it physically, the only thing I've seen that's even close to it, besides some of the tiny towns here in Mississippi, uh, I guess with Cairo, Illinois. I went there a couple summers ago just to see, you know, Cairo, Illinois, and the, uh, the, the, the southern end of Illinois, and it's right on the, um, it's right on the Mississippi River, and it was one of the towns, they, the farmers wanted to, uh, dynamite the levee to flood Cairo to save their fields and I was going to Chicago this is last summer to, do, to going to do a talk at DePaul and I so well, I've, I've heard so many bad things about Cairo and I've left Helena and, and I said well, wow this looks just like Helena I mean but at least it was Cairo that made the national news for being in such a state of decay but you know the idea behind the, there was civil war battle in Helena there was all sorts of prominent politicians in Arkansas, football coaches from Helena, you know, NFL stars, people like that. But I, I really think the, the the biggest contribution Helena made in terms of people is uh, is its music. 
And uh, blues is what I'm going to be talking about, but William Warfield, the, the baritone that was in Showboat and uh, Porgy and Bess on stage and screen, he was from Helena. Um, Conway Twitty was born in Friars Point, but he went to a high school and graduated high school in Helena in 1953. He was Harold Jenkins and Sonny Payne and some of the Helena old-timers old still, you know, call him Hal or Harold or um, Levon Helm was from the country outside of Helena. Levon Helm from the band who, God, I guess he died last year, but in his later years, Levon was more known as a, I guess even as an actor, I guess he, as, he won a Grammy there at the end, but Levon Helm made his radio debut on radio station KFFA in Helena. Um, Frances Greer, an opera star of her day, was from Helena. And uh, there's a Rockabilly Hall of Fame that's in Jackson, Tennessee. It's in Jackson because Carl Perkins and all those guys were from there. But, and I do think that it's, uh, and they do have a museum. It's a nice organization. I would say that they have started to use fame kind of loosely. You know, they, anybody that played music, they let in, but Helena had uh, some 50s rock stars, well, LeVon Helm and Conway Twitty, but uh, there was a Smokey Joe Ba who was on the Sun Records collection sang a song, and it's a white guy, and it's a horrid, horrid song. It's Signifying Monkey. He was from, he was from Helena. There was a Mac Self, S-E-L-F. He died uh, three years ago. Um, he, had a, he recorded for Sun Records, and then there was a Jimmy Evans, and most of the guys that were in Ronnie Hawkins Hawks lived in Helena before Ronnie Hawkins took the band to Canada and replaced everybody but LeVon Helm with Canadians. Um, Jimmy Evans was the bass player before Rick Danko. He was a friend of mine. He died last year, um, and he recorded up until his death, and he was a really high-energy rockabilly. Um, Luke Paulman, who was the guitarist for the band. And in the way, they said, Luke, my friend, what about Anna Lee? That was, uh, that was Luke Paulman in that, in that song. Uh, but Helena's music history, it's, uh, it's, it's so deep, and it's, uh, it's more than blues, but it is the blues, I think. Uh, and uh, the, the most notable blues singer, blues musician to live in Helena would have been Sonny Boy Williamson. That's Rice Miller. Uh, there was John Lee Williamson from what, Brownsville, Tennessee, but John Lee, they were about the same age. John Lee Williamson popularized Ball It Up and Go, Step It Up and Go, but at some point in the late 30s, uh, Rice Miller, born in Tutwiler, Mississippi, harmonica player, he appropriated the name Sonny Boy Williamson. I, I can only think, and people speculate, but to, you know, to capitalize on the, the fame of the more established recording artist. Uh, Robert Johnson lived in Helena as a, well, he died when he was 27, so everything he did was as a young man, wasn't it? But Robert Johnson lived in Helena. He, uh, he was a stepfather to Robert Lockwood, who was probably the greatest contemporary, died five years ago, I think, uh, blues artist. Uh, Steve Levere, who produced the Robert Johnson box set, told me he thinks that Robert Johnson, and he hasn't done hasn't shown me the, the research or the documentation. He thinks Robert Johnson may have lived there as a, as a child. Um, and I, the golden age of the blues, I'm talking about Delta blues, you know, in the 20s you had Bessie Smith and there was the, you know, a lot of recordings made up north as everybody down here says, but the Delta blues, I'm talking about Charlie Patton, uh, Sunhouse, the Tommy Johnson and the Johnson brothers, then through Robert Johnson and then from there there's a direct line to Muddy Waters and Chess Records. Um, I would, I don't, I think the golden age of Delta Blues would have been in the 30s and 40s and uh, in the 50s, uh, you know, you had rock and roll and other, you know, other things that the blues either inspired or, you know, helped create. Uh, but Helena in the 30s, the early 1950s was and it's, it, a lot of my job was to argue for Helena's place in music. Grew up in Arkansas. Well, there's nobody famous from Arkansas. And as you get older, you find out, well, Al Green, Johnny Cash, and all these people. And then you, 
you find out there's a place like Helena, and uh, I don't know why, and there are a lot of reasons why Helena was such a prominent place musically. It was much bigger than it is now. In the 1940 census, Helena had 27,000 people. The sign today says 15,000. I guarantee you it's 10,000 because there was a supplementary census two years ago, and uh, that's what it reflected. But you know, 20,000, 23,000 people live in Phillips County, which Helena's the seat of. It would have been closer to 50,000 people in 1950. And uh, the reasons for that population decline are almost all rooted in economics, and in that and I would include schools and other things like that as being under the umbrella of economics, but once so many people start moving, it, it, it snowballs, and there's really nothing you can do. Uh, I lived in Helena from 2001 until uh, earlier this year, and over the time I was there, the population declined 25%, and you can't, obviously that's, that's not sustainable. Um, Helena's place in the music world, it was at a crossroads. And it was in the heart of the most creative part of America. You know, it's, this is where American literature came from. Most of it, most of the good stuff. You know, Faulkner, uh, Tennessee Williams, all in, down through today. But uh, I think it was, uh, it was all the poor black people and the poor white people kind of thrown together it was a it was a it was a melting pot you know Clarksdale Helena both extremely diverse for being tiny towns in the middle of nowhere a huge Italian Greek Lebanese uh, Jewish community besides just black and white and through the 60s you would have a migrant farm workers from Mexico and Central America and it's a uh, uh, the Delta is much more complex place then superficially we can we can make it out to be but uh, I mentioned Robert Johnson lived in Helena of course uh, Sonny Boy Williamson would be the uh, he'd be the big name bigger bigger name to uh, Helena people because he he lived there on and off from the 30s he died in Helena at his home in Helena May 25th 1965 but uh, Sonny Boy Williamson and Robert Lockwood Robert Jr. Lockwood the sort of stepson of Robert, Robert Johnson, Robert Lockwood's mother, been one of Robert Johnson's girlfriends. In 1941, those two guys, uh, Lockwood and Williamson, approached the owners of the then brand new uh, radio station KFFA. It's AM 1360, still on the air over there. It, uh, the station opened in November 1941. Uh, Lockwood and Williamson approached the owners of the station. They were on the air with King Biscuit Time by uh, December of that year, 1941. Um, within, and it, I don't know the end date, but all music was live at one point. I, I think it was the expense and availability of recordings, and I think there may have been union rules too, but there, you know, this is the era of the Grand Ole Opry and Louisiana Hayride. And so Helena, and I, I assume WROX, you know, had shows like that. And the, they would have gospel performers all, Sunday, all day Sunday. There were country bands. In the 50s, LaVon Helm and the Rockabilly people had their own shows. But uh, King Biscuit time started. And the King Biscuit, it's not just a funny name. It, it is a really cool name, but it was a brand of flour that was marketed re uh, regionally. Um, sold in grocery stores, and the, the, the show was a, a venue to sell that flower. Within, within the next year, there was a Mother's Best Flower Hour that uh, Robert Lockwood started. He was only, Robert Lockwood was only on King Biscuit time for six months, I think. Uh, Bright Star Flower had a show that Lil Walter Jacobs hosted. Uh, and I, I would say 1942 to 1950, the, the years for blues in, uh, in Helena. Uh, in the King Biscuit time, that, that, that's what keeps Helena on the map, you know, the King Biscuit time radio show. Um, the, uh, and it was on the air live until 1970. Uh, the last, uh, Pet Curtis, the drummer who had been on since 1942, he passed in 1970, and they continued the show until 1980 with recorded music. Um, it's really remarkable that 
you know, from this genesis and events in 1941, 42, from really the people that were put on the outs, on the edges, on the fringes of society, you know, these Sonny Boy Williamson, you know, probably, oh God, the guy had, I've read, born in 1894, born in 1899, born in 1905, he had, uh, he was Rice Miller, he, Alec Ford, Alec Miller, I mean, he, half a dozen birthdays, half a dozen real names, um, I, I, it's remarkable that he, that something so lasting could come from, you know, a person who probably had to uh, disguise a lot of details of his background for, for different reasons. And, and if anybody has any questions, you can ask me while I'm, while I'm doing this or I'll take questions afterwards. But uh, it was the, the King Biscuit Time radio show that, that led us to where we are today. Um, I think that in this decline of Helena that I, that I referenced, I said between 2001 and 2010, the town lost... 25% of its population, and that's uh, that's spot on accurate. I, let's say 20% at least, 3,000 out of 15,000. Um, so in 1986, of course, this was going on. I visited Helena 20 plus years ago, and it, I don't know that it was better. I would not say what's, I couldn't quantify it just driving through the town, but uh, the town would have been bigger then, but you know, already the handwriting was on the walls. And I think. These things, they started so It started with the Great Migration, you know, 1919 to 1960. Black people going north to Memphis, St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit. Um, how could it not have started with the Civil War? You know, I mean, people wanted to get out of the South, even going back to 1865. But Main Street started drying up. And the Main Street organization, and I, I don't know if you guys were here, but in 1986, the decision was made that they had to have some kind of event downtown. And Bill Ferris, who was then at the Center for Southern Culture, or Southern Studies at Ole Miss, suggested a blues festival, and he suggested the name King Biscuit. Uh, one of the best things the festival did right off the bat was bring the show back. The, the owners of the station, Jim and Nancy Howe, uh, took King Biscuit time off the air in 1980, and they were just gonna be done with it. Uh, they took, put it back on the air in 1986, uh, the month of the first festival. Um, and that, that, the absence of King Biscuit Time, King Biscuit Time, the blues show, named after the flower, that is how the King Biscuit flower, F-O-L-O-W-E-R, that gap, that's, that's the time when those guys, from, I think it was in Boston, that's when they took over. You know, they trademarked everything and just, you know, we own that. And, you know, I've explained to so many people that you know, Robert Lockwood and Sonny Boy Williamson came before Blue Oyster Cult and Peter Frampton, you know, and that's how we know in Helena that King Biscuit Time was, was the real deal and not the classic rock show from the 70s, but, uh, oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, no, I was just remembering, uh, you know, King Biscuit Time, you know, the Boston Festival, and that's when they took over, 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 I cannot tell you how we, we were. Can I talk about things that aren't as severe tax problems? The 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 uh, festival is a nonprofit, but you have to pay taxes on T-shirts, merchandise, beverage sales, and somebody forgot. Whoa! And uh, you know that you, the IRS will find you, and they were in arrears. I could I tell you it was closer to $30,000 uh, in taxes. And these people from the King Biscuit Flower Hour and this group in Memphis, uh, they wanted $30,000 for the King Biscuit Blues Festival to be, keep using that name. And who were the people who kept? It was a group, uh, well, the, the King Biscuit Flower Hour, was, it was those guys, and that show hasn't been on the air probably since the early 80s. But they have the archives, and you go to their website. But they were linked with a group, Performa Entertainment in Memphis. And it was so acrimonious that the King Biscuit Blues Festival took that hideous name, Arkansas Blues and Heritage Festival. You know, what's a heritage? But the, the, the King Biscuit Flower Performa Entertainment people who were by that time in Memphis 
they said that they were going to have a King Biscuit Blues Festival in Memphis in October. When? The same weekend as your festival. Uh, of course, it never materialized. They realized that name. You know, people don't, people don't even remember. It's come full circle. You remember the King Biscuit Time Blues Show? No, nope. very few people remember, you know, the classic rock. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that has had a much shorter half-life, shelf-life than the blues had. And uh, I was at the board meeting. It was in the summer of 2005, and we did not, we didn't think we were going to be able to have the festival. Um, and one of the board members, and I, I will not say who it was, he's still on the board, uh, he came up with that idea, Arkansas Blues and Heritage Festival. And I've worked in museums, you know, I've, and I know the thing in museums is to change the name every few years, you know, now that, you know, the Museum of Modern Art is MOMO, and so you see all these small town museums trying to come up with cool acronyms, you know, you can't be a museum of whatever anymore, you know, I've, BBM, like, no. But, you know, I like it when you say it's a museum, you know, people know what it is, but those are those are some pretty bleak years, and I'm not an attorney, and it was, it was just baffled me. Well, we came up with the name. I mean, there were recordings from the 1940s. There's photos from the 1940s of flower sack that says 1945 on it, King Biscuit, uh, you know, promotional, you know, items from the 40s and 50s, and it was. Uh, I learned a lot about the law and about uh, about taxes sitting in um, on those board meetings, but. Um, eventually, the, this performer entertainment group and the King Biscuit Flower people realized that there wasn't much value to that name outside of Helena. I mean, using the name King Biscuit Time Radio Show or King Biscuit Blues Festival in Helena, you can get people from all over the world to come there. I mean, all over Western Europe, uh, Japan. <laughs> I have a friend, I always say he's coming to the festival from Australia, and he corrects me, no, Tasmania. You know, but I mean, it really is, it's almost totally international. I mean, and people from all over come, come to the festival. And I, I think that it, I think the Helena Festival just outweighed those guys, you know, just won the war of attrition and got the name back because nobody called it Arkansas Blues and Heritage. Everybody said The Biscuit. Everybody in Helena calls it the Blues Festival. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, what the name is, but, and now, and, what, 11, last year was the first festival that they got the name back, 2010, I don't know if you guys were there, but they announced it right as B.B. King, or between the band, while B.B. King was getting ready to take the stage, and I, I went home, I knew they were going to announce it, so I went home several blocks away, and said they're going to announce it from the stage, you could hear you feel the earth move. I mean, just to get that name back. And it, uh, Helena has tremendous economic problems, social problems, and not unique to Helena. You'll find it in, throughout the Mississippi Delta, Appalachia, Indian reservations, you know, a lot of the population drain, brain drain, all that stuff. But it was, getting that name back was one of the best things to, to ever happen to Helena as far as a, uh, to boost local pride, to, I guess, to some extent, boost the local economy. I've got Shelly and Lee and her staff here gave me a, a lot of materials from their archives, and that's a Mississippi Humanities Council has, has brought me here today, and Shelly, and I've, their pro programs, uh, newspaper articles, I'm looking at an article from 1988 about the, uh, about the festival, this is from Clarksdale's press register, but uh, the first festival, 1986, and there's a, there, there's a permanent stage over there now, that was built in 2003, um, that stage cost upwards, it was close to half a million dollars, you know, I mean, that's the investment that, that goes into that festival. Um, it was on a flatbed truck, you know, the trailer, uh, the first year, maybe the first two years, and there's a train depot that's a museum over there now, and the, they pulled this uh, flatbed truck in front of it, and uh, God, a friend of mine, C.W. Gatlin, and he'll be playing at the 
over there this weekend. He was played at the first one. Robert Lockwood played. Uh, Frank Frost and those guys, and it was it was a small, really down home affair. But if you look at the uh, at the programs, you know, my God, I mean, that was the best people ever. And I, I well, that's why I think museums like this, especially the Delta Blues Museum, are so important. I, Blues is it's a young art form. I mean, it was documented around 1903. Anthropologist W.C. Handy, you know, first noted it. I think exactly 1903. But so here we are, 110 years later, and I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to say. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it's it's done now. It's preserved in amber. There are still people around. I'm and I'm telling you this because the last five years, so many people. Of course you lost Pine Top Perkins, Honey Boy Edwards, and Robert Lockwood, because, I mean, you can only live to be 98 or so. And, but then you have people like uh, Big Jack Johnson died earlier this year. Um, Willie Smith was, he was only 76. Willie Big Eye Smith, the Muddy Waters drummer who was from Helena. Um, and I know that, you know, there's a, so much great music produced by African-American blues artists today and younger, sometimes younger white artists, but it's, you know, you've removed, mostly removed the music from its economic, social, and oftentimes physical setting, and I, I don't know, I, I, I think this museum and I think that festival over there uh, do a great job of preserving it. Um, I'm not going to talk too long because I would encourage you guys to actually go to the festival, but I, uh, I've got so much material here, and I did want to point out, again, that these programs, and I, I'm keeping these, Shelly, because I've realized I don't have all of them, but they, they didn't save these in Helena, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's great. I, I first visited, well, I, you were probably in school, but I came to the museum when it was still in the, in the library. I think it was 1991, and I can tell you that one, one of the many things that concerns me, Helena is not in a position to uh, reap the benefits, to take advantage of the festival. Um, there will be more people staying here than staying in Clarksdale. You know, there's only two legitimate hotels in Helena, uh, three bed and breakfasts, and you can't, there's only so much you can do. There's one restaurant, you know, downtown, and so it, there are people that camp out over the levee. They don't come to the Blues Festival. There are people that are at the shack up in out here that won't ever, you know, and why, why would they have to? But people that actually don't go to the festival. And I think Clarksdale, you know, they started their festival two years after the King Biscuit. And they do, a, Clarksdale does a much better job promoting themselves and promoting the artists than Helena does. You, you cannot, you can't sustain a community on a three-day event. And I tell you, you know, that the King Biscuit Blues Festival, I live down there. That's the only time they, uh, <laughs> they stripe the streets. They work on the infrastructure, and so it's great. I wish they could have the festival every day, but uh, so many of these people are gone, you know. I mean, blues is mostly, it's an older person's game. I mean, there are some kids that sing blues, and they're great at it, but I kind of like to see a few miles on my blues performers. You know, how, how are you going to talk about suffering if you're 18 to 20 years old? I, but I, I digress. I, Shelley asked me to talk about some of the early performers. My, uh, my memories of Albert King at the 1991 Blues Festival. You know, the Albert King, Born Under a Bad Sign, Cross Cut Saw, uh, Albert King who recorded with Eric Clapton, with Steve Ray Vaughan. Um, I remember him yelling at the sound man. I remember Junior Wells, the harmonica player, you know, whose who stage show was, uh, it was the closest thing to James Brown I ever got to see. Uh, Jimmy McCracklin, the 50s uh, R&B singer that did The Walk, I will not sing it for you, The Stroll, he, he played at some of those early festivals. Um, LaVon Helm, who was a member of Ronnie Hawkins Hawks, later Bob Dylan's band, um, he, he played at all the early festivals. Uh, uh, Frank Frost, Big Jack Johnson, Sam Carr, who were local local heroes, and internet, ultimately, and I'm glad they did, ended up as international blues stars. Those were some of the names you could uh, 
seeing here at the early blues festivals and uh it's just a great event and i before you guys got here i addressed that for a few years the festival had to change its name to the arkansas blues and heritage festival this is the second year that the king biscuit blues festival has its name back um and it, it looks like a great one the last few years they've uh had bb king as a headliner uh, you could put on a bon bonnie Raitt this year uh, Taj Mahal, just, it's, I, I think the festival, it looks, looks like it's got a really bright future, and I, I won't get into it, because I do know some of the particulars on the financials, but it's, it's amazing, it's an amazing event, it's, it's not the oldest festival in the Delta, I think, um, I think Greenville has had their festival since the 70s, and Anytime you have an event in the Delta and it's successful, there will be problems. Uh, you know, Helena's problem with the name change. I know that the, the Greenville festivals had problems with funding. It's hard to, you, ha you have to pay for these things, but it's a, uh, this impact of the Helena festival, and I don't, I don't know how much, how much time I have, but the, it's, it's worldwide. There, there are two restaurants in Memphis, and King Biscuit Cafe something. There was a, a King Biscuit Cafe in Houston. I, I think they recently went out of business. You know, this King Biscuit Flower Hour, the classic rock show from the 70s, which is another story. That was, you know, that was inspired by the King Biscuit Time radio show. The King Biscuit Time radio show started in 1941 in Helena, and that is the namesake for the festival that's going on over there in Helena uh, right now. There's so many songs about the festival. Uh, Charlie Musselwhite, who's featured heavily in the, the collections and the exhibits here, the harmonica player, he's uh, featured here at the Delta Blues Museum. He wrote a song called Sonny Payne Special. Sonny Payne is the, uh, still the host of the King Biscuit Time radio show in Helena. There's a oh, song, Living on King Biscuit Time by a, a blues band from southern Missouri. I've got a whole list of songs, but I'm, uh, Reba Russell, the, uh, who I'm sure is singing at the festival this weekend, uh, the Memphis uh, blues lady, she has a song, s songs about Helena, and it's, uh, if, if you've never been to the festival, I, I, I think the, the best part about it is, it, it, it really is, it's like a blues homecoming. It's like family over there, even though it's a huge festival. I would, I would encourage you, if you do go to the festival, to not just camp out in front of the main stage. There are two other, at least two other stages, a gospel stage, a rising, an emerging artist stage, and then at any one time you might see a dozen performers playing on the streets. And you can, uh, that's where you really, I think, get, get to the heart of what the blues was and is about. Um, but go to that acoustic heritage stage and, I think most of the, the classic artists in blues, unfortunately, you know, they're not with us anymore, but you can, this weekend you'll be able to see James Cotton. Uh, James Cotton, the harmonica player. The, the, the best living harmonica player. He, he recorded for Sun Records, for Chess Records. He was Muddy Waters' harmonica player. He was Howlin' Wolf's harmonica player. And he played at the first King Biscuit Festival 27 years ago. He'll be there. Um, Ernest Roy is another performer you can check out. He's from originally from Clarksdale, lives uh, near Helena on the other side of the river now. His father, Ernest Roy Sr., was a legendary musician, a man called the House Rockers, I, I think, here in Clarksdale back in the 50s. Ernest will be playing this weekend. Uh, I'd also recommend that you check out uh, Marcus Cartwright. He's 17 years old. He's from Holly Grove, Arkansas, and he's a... Uh, really phenomenal player he'll be playing and you'll have to get the schedules when you get over there um mississippi spoon man is a is a helena based performer he used to live in mississippi but he'll be playing and he'll, he'll be playing with a, a band of, of veteran musicians uh philip stackhouse is a young for blues i think he's 35 i mean that's a baby for blues music but he is the grandson of houston stackhouse who was one of the legends of the Helena and Mississippi blues scene, and Phillips playing this weekend at the King Biscuit Blues Festival. And I would, 
I know Bonnie Raitt and all these guys are fantastic, but I mean, go see the, you know, the, the lesser known people and the, uh, I think that's where you really get what the King Biscuit Blues Festival is, is all about. And um, I would, I assume most of you guys are on your way over there, but uh, check out this great museum here. And, uh, and uh, of course, please go to the King Biscuit Blues Festival because it does help keep that little town afloat to some extent, but I think I'm gonna probably wrap it up. But if anybody has any questions or comments or anything like that, I'd be very glad to, to answer them. I'm gonna look through my notes because I'm sure there's something very important that I've meant to tell you guys. Well, I actually, the, again, I, I liked reading the articles, but I, I, I think just the lineups. And I had, a, I had a vague memory of having seen Albert King. And so I dug through these, and sure enough, he was there, and I found out that on, I don't have my reading glasses, but on Saturday of the 1992 festival, sure enough, he did play, and I was there. Um, I don't know, you know, once I got these things, I, I don't know that it was, <laughs> thank you. Full service I, I'm trying, I don't, I don't think I'm trying to be vain, but, but squinting all the time, is, that's not really that cool. But I, I, I think probably, just, I'm glad I'm not being filmed, but thank you for these, these actually work. I think remembering the names, uh, going through these articles from New York Times, uh, I, I do see Robert Palmer in there, it's John Perrell's, but the articles about you know people that you knew. And frankly, I, I thought some of these things were lost. I'd seen a, a friend of mine in Tulsa had a handful of programs, and she's passed away, and I'm sure her family tossed them, but the, the archives here at the Delta at the Delta Blues Museum. It's I acquired a lot of stuff for a museum in Helena, but I, I really I think these are these are they have a lot of stuff, but these, these are different. They're more uh, they're deeper. You know, they go back further. Uh, they you know they go back to you lose so many people in blues that that it. Just a list of names is it's very important um, and, and it's it's from year to year you, you wouldn't do that at a, at a Lollapalooza you know like but at the, at the King Biscuit so many people don't make it from year to year you know, and I, and it's not necessarily these old guys but I, I, I think I don't know that anything was surprising because I kind of Shelly gave me a heads up of what I was going to be looking at but I, I think just Seeing all these names, you know, and there was a, there was a lot of biographical information on the artists that played. I mean, Johnny Copeland, God, I mean, one of the greatest blues guitarists ever. Um, but you know, by this point, you know, I know most of that stuff. You know, the biographical overviews. Of, and I think something that really touched me though was, uh, and I have, I have in my notes here, uh, the, the stuff about Frank Frost and Sam Carr and Big Jack Johnson, the Jelly Roll Kings. I, I'm sure Rich has played with all those guys, but. I, I got to play with Sam Carr and Big Jack Johnson, and to the extent that a younger, if you'll grant me that, uh, white guy can be friends with an 85-year-old black guy, I was friends with them. Um, I'm looking here at John Weston, um, and John died, I think, seven years ago, but I was great friends with John and, uh, and his wife, and seeing him on the 1992 program file, um, the famous unknowns uh, featuring Mark Sawlings. Yeah, what a great name! But Mark Sawlings was a uh, he was from the Arkansas Delta, and he he passed very prematurely. Great, great friend of mine. You know, it's I'm, I, I, I hate, I'm not trying to be morbid because I mean, if you have an event from 1986, yeah, a lot of those people won't be with you anymore. But Snooky Pryor at the 1993 festival, of course, Pine Top Perkins. R.L. Burnside, but no, I, these, these are these are great. I, I I don't know. I don't get surprised that easily, but it was it was great to see 
see these names. Jimmy Dawkins, Kate Webster. Hmm. And you know, everybody that, that played with Muddy Waters, you know, everybody but Muddy Waters was at the festival. Um, hmm. I guess, I guess I'm done, Shelley. I th I'd like to thank the Delta Blues Museum for having me and the Mississippi Humanities Council. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Rich, for podcasting this. And I know Shelly's got him working, but Lee uh, Farr helped me uh, compile all these uh, materials. I think he's in Helena right now, probably. But uh, thanks so much. And it's, uh, I really enjoyed reliving 27 years of this, of this festival. Thank you.